So again, we have identified a high risk group that we can, most of the orthodontists, they know of it. Like if, if, if I get a patient that with the teeth roots are, look like one of those forms, these patients are at high risk of root resorption. But what happens in a heavy, um, crowded private practice, some orthodontists see between 60 to 120 patients a day, they overlook some of those patients. And what happens after six months of treatment when the patients start to say, oh, my teeth are really, really moving, they take the x-ray, and this is what happens, the root is gone. So there is no one single treatment for those patients other than taking out the braces and they live as is forever unless um, their tooth can be saved by root canal treatment or most of them they have to take their teeth out and they can have their teeth replaced by implants. So we'll start to do another test in the lab on again back to the rats and basically we induced fracture. Like if a patient like the hockey people when they get trauma most, most, of, uh, uh, most likely what happens when their teeth get broken, most likely like Ryan Smith few a few years ago, he lost his teeth, but part of the teeth were still inside the jaw, but what happened, they just took out the rest of the teeth and then put implants in. So right now we try to imitate what happens if you get a trauma of, or someone get a trauma in their teeth and the teeth get fractured, can we save the natural teeth without replacing them with implants or bridges? This is what we are trying to do right now in the lab and we are successful to show that ultrasound only without any medication, without any stem cell, without any growth factors can actually regenerate the fractured roots in the lab. And again, in human teeth in the lab, uh, uh, this uh, we imitated fractured for the roots and after four weeks the roots get healed as you can see the difference between the fractured and the regenerated roots so we had to move further because the company that uh, uh, produced this big uh, uh, ultrasound device they are not interested in dental application so I was lucky when I joined the University of Alberta to um, join two peers uh, 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 an electric engineer, and we start to put together a micro or nano fabricated device that can be used solely for dental use. And then we had uh, Christy on board, that he was master's uh, degree at the time, and then we are moving right now from uh, proof of principle to a clinical trial, hopefully in two years. So this is the new device that it's been uh, fabricated by Smile Sonica. This patent has been licensed to Smile Sonica, which is a spin-off company. And <coughs> this device, again, it addresses lots of patients' worry. The patient can preserve their own teeth, and the orthodontist or the dentist can save their faces and minimal uh, uh, potential uh, li uh, litigations against them. Again, this uh, uh, device has been uh, licensed to uh, Christian, Smile Sonica, and uh, since two years, they have developed or uh, raised more than $200,000, and hopefully in a year, we'll, uh, or a, two years, we'll get to uh, real clinical trials in patients. So I hope I made it on time, and I'm ready for questions. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, the mechanism, basically, there are, after the first publication in 2002, three groups of researchers appear in the world, Japan and US and UK, and they um, uh, uncover the genetic background of it, and basically ultrasound stimulates specific genes um, that's important for dental matrix formation, as well as also stem cells. So we're working on both sides right now, and stem cell differentiation into tooth-forming cells, and also dental matrix formation uh, specific genes.